Welcome, Welcome to the Knob Sessions episode two. I'm Malcolm Joseph. I'm Tam Johnston. And I just smacked the mic by accident. <laughs> As you know, this is a uh, brand new music platform for emerging and established artists, although probably by the end of this one, we're going to have to think of something new to say because it's not a new platform necessarily. No, we're, say we're, two, pla oh, we're, we're two. The tonight. platform. Yes, the only platform. <laughs> yeah. We have a fantastic show for you tonight. And uh, now it's you, we have the fabulous Rue, who's going to be performing, have one of her bunch of songs that are going to be performed tonight called Boy. Absolutely. And we've got uh, also an interview with Jamie Lawson, exclusive interview and a new track he's telling us about his EP that launches today. We also have a fantastic interview with Ed Koreev, top rock and roll photographer who's going to be talking about the time he shot Jimi Hendrix at Monterey Festival in 1967 because it's Jimmy's birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Jimmy. Today, happy birthday, dude. Interviews with Joe as well coming up again, who you may have seen last week, talking about the Airfield Studios and his time working at Apple Records. Fascinating stuff. But without further ado... Rue. <laughs> Oh, 
Uh, that was Rue for the track entitled Boy. We're going to have a few more from you later, right? Great. Look forward to that. Uh, earlier on, uh, Tam had bumped, uh, went off and bumped into his uncle. Tam went off and had a chat with his uncle. I did. Uncle Joe. And Uncle Joe has got a few great stories to tell about his early days in his career, which he's played with the greats, right? He has. Uh, we're talking David Essex, Elton John. 10CC. Steve Harley. Mark Bolan. Joan Armour Trading. Mike Silver, Peter Gabriel. God, Stevie Wonder. List oh. goes on. So earlier on, Tam had a really nice chat about his early days at Apple. Oh. <laughs> You've talked about the history of the airfield <laughs> itself, and now we're sitting in the studio. How did your musical career begin? Well, my musical career uh, began when I went to London in 1971, at the age of 16. The previous autumn, I went and spent a few days with your mum, my sister, Diana, and your dad, Davy, just before you were born, up at Wasey's Orchard near Oxford. And Davy was making it on the session scene and making a name for himself, and he encouraged me. So I gave it a go. I arrived in London. I had 80 pounds in my pocket that I'd earned on the farm. So my first day, took 60 of the 80 pounds <laughs> down Shaftesbury Avenue, where I bought my Yamaha FG300, which I still have and started to do floor spots in folk clubs to try and get noticed. After about three weeks, my 20 quid was almost gone. <laughs> I saw this ad in the Evening Standard, Office Boy Wanted for Record Company. So I found myself in Savile Row, number three, outside Apple Records. My heroes, the Beatles. So I went up and I had an interview with a, a lovely, lovely girl. And at the end of the interview, she said, at the moment, there isn't a job, but you'll be the first one. And I said, I don't know, but I haven't got any money. You don't understand. I'll do anything. I'll clean the door, anything. Anyway, she said, I'm sorry, there's no job. So the next day, I arrived really early and stood amongst the apple scruffs, the girls that always were outside the building waiting for the lady that interviewed me to turn up. And when she did, I, I rushed up the steps after her and said, oh, do you remember me from yesterday? I, I, she said, come in. So she took me to the top of the building and said, you just sit there. And about five minutes later, she came back and she said, you've got a job. And I started there and then. This was a really interesting time. McCartney left the band. Alan Klein had just become the Beatles' manager. So the first jobs that I'd do in the day is make up the fires in the offices, and there would be the three of them talking to Alan Klein right there. I mean, it was, it was like something out of a, a bizarre film. It was a wonderful way to learn London because every day the phone would ring in the office boys' room, somebody needs to go and pick up a film from so-and-so or deliver something up to... Ringo's house, get a lift back with the, uh, the chauffeur in the stretch limousine. <laughs> so it, it, was, it was like a fairy tale, really. Hey, Rue. Hello. Welcome to Nub's Thank Sessions. Thank you. Thank you. It's good to be here. Brilliant. I'm glad to see you. We'll see you introduce your band. Mm hmm. Got Jake on bass, right? Yep. Barnaby on drums, and Martin on keys. Having a great time. They're a good bunch. So you've got a couple more to do for us, yeah? Yes, we yeah? do. We're going to play um, my latest single now, which is called Lucid. Brilliant. Rue.
going to play another one and um, this track's called All Kinds of Ways. You 
the airfield established? Uh, the airfield was established in the early 1930s by the widow of William Rhodes Morehouse, who was the first ever pilot recipient of the Victoria Cross in World War I, posthumously. Mrs Rhodes Morehouse started it off as a commercial airfield, and in about 1937, the Admiralty commandeered it the whole area that was farmland otherwise, and started to build the first ever Royal Naval Air Base. And here we are in Royal Naval Air Station HMS Vulture, as it was called. So after the family took over the airfield, what happened? Well, father was a farmer, so it was intensively farmed. But gradually over the years, the buildings have been taken up with um, light industrial. We've got um, aircraft maintenance here. We've got uh, surfboard manufacturers, marine environment. We've had the lifeguards here. We've got a sound company in one of our warehouses. So it's actually a real nice hub of local businesses and um, we're part of that. Father also was in the RAF during the war on the Burma border for three years, but he wasn't a flyer, so he wanted to take up flying, so he took up flying with some other farmers, the flying farmers. And he got into flying gyrocopters. In fact, up on the sound stage, we've got one of Bob's gyrocopters that people might notice. So yeah, he really got into it, and there's been continuous flying here basically since the 1930s. We had a, a, a wonderful project here, lots of wonderful projects, one of them being the Grace Spitfire, which is quite famous, one of the, the first ever two-seater Spitfires. Came here in tea chests, and it left as a two-seater Spitfire, and still flying, obviously. Wonderful thing. Such a fascinating history it's incredible, here. Incredible, yeah. And of course, we are the Nub Sessions live from Airfield Studios. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot of history, and as the show goes on, I'm sure we'll be showing you 
lots more. So, have you got a little jingle for me, Mel? That's our means. We are going into our new section now. We've got all sorts of really cool things to talk about. First thing is Print for Music, which is an online sale by a collection of world-renowned photographers, including Tony McGee, Jules Fermanovsky, Rankin, loads more. It's over 100 iconic images on sale until December the 21st. And yeah. going to a great cause. To great help. cause, absolutely. The, the, uh, it's a charity called Stagehand that set this up and it's to benefit the lives of crew affected by the pandemic. Prints are available for, from £95 each, including images of David Bowie, Coldplay, Florence and the Machine, Stormzy, there's a huge list of people. Get over to prints.com, it's fantastic. It's definitely worth it. It'd be such a great help to a lot of people who are suffering in our industry. Absolutely. Right, as we promised before, we've got a little something here to celebrate Jimi Hendrix's birthday, which is today. Yeah. So, uh, a few years ago, I interviewed Mr. Ed Kareff, who's one of the top, sorry, Kareff, who's one of the top rock and roll photographers of all time. He is the chap that shot the famous image of Jimi Hendrix in Monterey as he set his guitar on fire. And I was very lucky to interview him a few years ago, and we talked about it. Here it is on the BT. Fantastic. You know, when Jimi Hendrix is burning his guitar, I'm just worried about not getting hit by the guitar. I'm not really picking up all the nuances of his picking. <laughs> was that the first time you'd seen him? Uh, it was the first time I'd ever seen him, a photograph, an image, heard a note of his music when he walked out on stage. A couple days before, a German photographer mentioned him and said, save some film for this Jimi Hendrix cat. I'm not gonna believe it. But he didn't get the shot. <laughs> you got the shot. I got the shot. You got probably the most iconic photograph in rock and roll. How old are you again? Well, when I took that photograph, I had just turned 17, like two months before I took that. It's the furthest away from home I'd ever been by myself. And it was only 400 miles away. <laughs> Turned out to be a big deal. I'm glad I did it. It's the last shot on the roll, shot 36A. There was a sequence of, with the lighter fluid of the matches and all that. Well, the, the Who were on that gig as well. well they came up, well, that's why he they, did it, because they, they followed him. The Who followed that. And that I had seen before. We knew what to expect. I mean, it's going to be a big free-for-all when the Who are going to kick things over and break a guitar at the end. That's what they did. And Jimi Hendrix knew that too. They say that no one knew what he was going to do. Even his road manager wasn't sure. He was standing back watching the whole thing. He's in the back of some of the photos standing there. <laughs> Oh, that was fantastic. Happy birthday, Jimmy. Happy birthday. And I should mention that Ed Kareev, the photographer that was in that interview, put this book out a couple of years ago, which is featuring the photographs he took at Montreux, among many others of Jimmy. It's a fantastic book. Please check it out. And I need to thank Kelly at Sinkerding for letting me use this book when we did the filming. Well, when I did the filming, I don't know whose guy's hands they were in the shot. Do you, Mel? No. No, none of us do. <laughs> yeah. Yes, very nice. Um, we also need to mention there's a Frank Zappa documentary that comes out today, and it's across all the platforms, Amazon, iTunes, etc., etc., etc. It's the first time that uh, anyone's been allowed access to the Zappa archive, so there's lots of really cool stuff in there, and it's made by Alex Winter, who we all know from Bill and Ted. Who knew? <laughs> now, Malcolm, we need to talk about Click and Collect. Click and Collect. Click and Collect is, right, have you not been to your local record shop in a long, long time? Well, I have. And guess how he got his records? Click I called and Collect. Up, yeah, called up the record store. Music Nostalgia in Truro is uh, the one I pretend to frequent most often. Okay. Bought a very nice Bowie album the other day. Sounds fantastic. Uh, also picked this up, which is uh, by Storm Gordon. Storm is based here with her partner, David, and they make music at the Airfield Studios too. 
Maybe we'll do a feature on them someday. Let's yes, hope so. And finally, I think I'm done. You are. So I'm going to have a break now. Mel's going to take over. Yeah, for a second. <laughs> yeah. So earlier on, Tam met up with one of our special guests, Jamie Lawson, and did a really lovely interview with him via Zoom. It's true. Uh, well, you're going to see it right now. Check it out. We are very lucky on the Nub Sessions to have Mr. Jamie Lawson with us. Hey, Jamie. Hello, Tam. How are you doing? I'm very well. Yeah, how are you? Yeah, good. All the better for seeing you. It was just talking to Rob, your sound engineer, earlier, and it's only been two years since uh, the Ed Sheeran Mahusif tour that you did. I've been wanting to ask you, what was that experience like? Amazing. It was just one of the oddest feelings I've ever had in kind of walking up a ramp to a sea of 50, 60, 70,000 faces and going, hello, whatever city I was in. <laughs> the surge that went through you every night was, was, was... You didn't really get used to it. You have an EP coming out today. I do. So did you record yeah. this at home? Pretty much, yeah. So the way I've been working lately is I would demo songs up as best that I can and then send all those files to a producer called Tim Ross, mm. uh, who I've worked with for a long time and I do a lot of co-writing with. And um, he would then produce them uh, wonderfully and make uh, amazing sounds out of my very average sounds. Did I did a little acoustic video of um, a song called uh, Always Be There yes. from the new EP. I wrote it with Tim, Tim, Tim Ross, the producer. And, uh, it's a song about my boy. In the early stages of my wife's pregnancy, she was pretty poorly. Mm. And we were advised to go and get a scan at about six weeks. And uh, thankfully, everything was fine. Mm. But we looked at this screen and there was just this little kind of uh, kidney bean shape attached to a white line, wow. just pulsing. <laughs> and it was just so surreal to us both. Yeah. But um, it just kind of stuck with me and I had to write about it, I had to get it out. And I, th I think a lot of artists uh, tend to be a bit nervous about being that honest about something that's, you know, yeah. obviously a very personal thing. Well, there'll be a lot of songs about sleep deprivation now. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, and thanks so much for having me on. I think what you guys are doing is a brilliant thing and uh, much love to all of you there. Thanks, Jamie. So, yeah, thanks a million. This is my uh, uh, acoustic version of Always Be There uh, exclusively for the Nub Sessions. <laughs> Your hand in mine We were walking on a hillside Off the fly kites It was almost a memory Almost a truth Except you didn't know me And I hadn't met you I'm staying on Forever I swear So you know to hold you however scared so you know I'll always be there and now you're inside her, barely a given you're holding a lifeline beating a rhythm you're floating somewhere in outer space So you 
Great. Thank you so much to Jamie Lawson for that exclusive video clip and for the interview. It was lovely to catch up with him again. But from video, we come to real life. Hi. The lovely <laughs> Rue is back with us. Thank you for joining me on the couch. No, thank you. Yeah, have you enjoyed it so far? I have. It's been great. It, lo it looks amazing in here. Yeah, yeah, well, you know, you guys make it even more amazing looking. <laughs> thank you so much, guys. Great band there. <laughs> you guys are. Uh, you sound fantastic. Thank you. How long have you been playing with these reptiles? They're not. They're not bad, are they? <laughs> no. <laughs> Very nice. Um, well, we, we all sort of we do like different lineups, but a couple of years, I would say, on years. and off. But it's it's not often we get to play as a band, so this is quite special. Excellent. Oh, yeah. we'll, we're on it. We have another exclusive. So when you did the live stream, I know you've done a couple this year. Was that with the whole band? No, I did it just with Barnes um, yeah. in the front room. Had a couple of bottles of wine. Excellent. It was a very n scary experience, but <laughs> I'd recommend everybody tries it. It's, it's so scary. I haven't gone down that road yet, but I'm looking. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Actually, it's look, it does look like a lot of fun. But yes, quite nerve-wracking. I'm sure at the beginning. Yeah. Must talk about uh, your releases. I mean, uh, you know, we talked. I think uh, previously about your Lucid single that came mm -hmm. out earlier in the year, and um, you have an EP. Possibly coming out next year? Yeah, so Lucid, which was the second song, um, that came out in June. That's available to download on Bandcamp and Excellent. stream, but download it. Um, Bye. But Bye. yeah, we're, all the songs that we've been playing tonight, we're going to try and put together into an EP and possibly a few more songs. Excellent. Um, yeah, not sure when, but hopefully by next year. Yeah, <laughs> oh, I hope so. Well, we'll look forward to that. And obviously, we must have you back sometime mm. as well. Um, speaking of Bandcamp, uh, a little bird told me that's where you make most of your money. <laughs> yeah, as, Give as me some money tips. being a musician goes. Um, Give me some yeah. tips. So on, on Fridays at the moment, Bandcamp are like waiving the revenue share. So if yeah. anybody wants to go and download my music, do it today. Do it today because you um, make some more money. <laughs> yeah, it is today, I think. Yeah. 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 It's Fantastic. Friday, isn't it? Yeah, it is. Yeah, I think so. Who knows? Yeah. <laughs> Um, the other thing I want to touch on is making sure everyone knows where to find you on mm -hmm. social media. So your handle is it's Rue to you, is that correct? Yep, that's right, so, on everything. Yep, so not Rue, not Rachel Newton, which is her real name. Um, make sure you check it's Rue to you and you'll find all of her stuff. And I guess that's Instagram, Facebook. Instagram, Twitter, which I don't really use, but... It's yeah. there if you need it. YouTube. 
Is that uh, also the Bandcamp mm -hmm. one yeah. as well? Yeah. Brilliant. So all across there. That's fantastic. I think we've had a few comments coming in. Look at this. What an amazing voice. Great to hear some fantastic Cornish Thank artists. You. Excellent. Thank <laughs> you, John, for that comment. I agree. Those lounge chill sessions with the Rue were fab. Thank you, Mike Pitches. It was... What was it? It was a great wine fueled live stream. <laughs> Didn't miss a beat. Yes. Says Martha, Martha knows. Nash. <laughs> was she there too? No. Was she? Did she provide the wine? Uh, no, no. She's a friend of mine. She's in a choir with me. So. Oh wow! Yeah. Excellent. Wow. So, do you do any other things apart from the choir and Rue? Or? Um, well, I do a few like jazz bands, like you know, traditional jazz sort of quartet stuff. Excellent. But choir noir is a lot of fun. They do like big choral um, arrangements of like, heavy metal songs. Wow. Uh, which is like totally opposite to this. What, um, what kind of so things do you do? What, what sort of stuff do you do? Uh, so they recently did an Incubus one, and then we, we did one that I was on, which was by Architects, Doomsday. Oh, wow. And it was just epic. So yeah, go check that out if you like that. I bet that sounds that. amazing. And where, where, <laughs> do, where does that happen with people want to go and see? Um... It's all on YouTube. Right, yeah. yeah. Excellent. And mm. I guess you do, do you do live performances when Not you're yet. able? Yeah. Not yet, but hopefully. Excellent. Wow, that sounds fantastic. I'm, I'd like to check that out. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think, have we got any more? Yes. Rue, Jake and Barnaby. They got oh, me feeling all mountain. kinds of ways. <laughs> and that's Winter Mountain, who we had He's on back. last week. He's back. <laughs> he just can't keep away. Three kisses. Sounding great. Rachel, as always. Mm -hmm. And great job on the production, Nub Sound. Thank you very much, Speedboat Sessions. Who else have we got there? We have one from uh, Mr. Berryman, Dickon Berryman, I think it was. Yeah, can't remember what he said. It was <laughs> something rude, probably. <laughs> is that the songer? I don't know what a songer the is. Songer. Sorry. It's the songer from Love Gap, yeah. Oh, the songer from. Are you the songer from Love Gap? I was the songer from Love Gap. Ah, interesting. And you were the guitarist. I was the guitarist. <laughs> There's me pretending I had nothing to do with it, but I was the guitarist also for a time. But those days are over. We had fun. Yeah. Oh, one more. Great session. Thank you, Dad of Ripley. Is that Ripley as an alien Ripley or something else? Write in and comment about that just so we know for sure. OK, I think that's it for now, guys. I think we're going to uh, now hand you over in the capable, very capable hands of Malcolm. But I just want to say thank you so much for having yeah, a chat, you. Nuru. Absolutely lovely. And looking. to all the team. Like, yeah. amazing. Oh. Amazing stuff. They are an amazing team. And uh, we're going to hear one more song from you later on, aren't mm -hmm. we? Excellent. And it's called Conversation. Conversation. We'll look forward to that. But for now, here's Malk. Ah, Brighton by the light. Hello. I thought I'd kind of mention what was going on with the, uh, the whole... the Nub Session team. We've got an amazing group of people here, so professional. It's amazing what they put together and how quickly this has kind of come to formation. I'd like to mention some names, so on my little bit of paper here, I'll go through it. We've got Josh and Tom, who are, which who are doing our lights, production, sound, editing, cameras and stuff. And then we've got Dan, who's Mr Internet Man, He's kind of doing all this to get right down. <laughs> yeah, he does all our socials and stuff. Uh, and we've got Rob and Ross. Ross is kind of stood there behind me somewhere over there. And Rob's in the other room from Nub Sounds, who create this amazing sound and set up all the kit and get us all running and sounding amazing. Uh, we've got Rose. Sat there, Rosie. Very big help. Adrian, I call, I, you know, Adrian's doing everything, so I call him the do, the do stuff guy. <laughs> Does everything guy, brilliant. And we've got Ryan, major attribute, top boy, who's our floor manager and puts us all in order. So, uh, that's it really. Oh, uh, yeah, I'm yeah, back. you're back I'm again. I'm back, I'm standing on my Come mark. On. You on your mark? Yeah, I'm on Malcolm. Malcolm's X. Malcolm's X, yeah. yeah. Good. <laughs> What a show that was. I mean, uh, I think it's just going to be changing, as you can see, from week to week and hopefully improving. Obviously, you'll let us know if you think that's not the case and we'll send somebody around, sort yeah. you out. Um, who have we got next week, Mel? Oh, we've got uh, our Atlantic route. 
Ooh. And the Bubble Band's going to be playing one song with them as well. Excellent. Looking forward to that one. Um, we've also got a couple more clips that we're dying to show you. Got part two of the Apple interview with Joe Partridge from the Airfield Studios. And uh, that links nicely to another item that we've got uh, about John Lennon. It's going to be 40 years on December the 8th since he was murdered. Very sad, obviously. Definitely something that meant a lot to me, having John in my life and his music. Huge influence. But we have a video about his last live appearance, which was at Madison Square Garden 1974 on stage with Elton John. It's going to be a fantastic clip. I uh, urge you to watch it and tune in. So, subscribe to the Love Sessions yeah. on YouTube Live, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and any other platform you'll find us on. Yeah. We'll be there. We'll be there waiting for you. Yes. So, to no further ado, we're going to leave you now with Rue. One last track. Please give it up. We'll hear you from TV Land. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Stephen. Rue. Rue. We'll see you next week. See you next week.
text me all night long It's not gonna do you any favors in the long run I just wish you'd say Girl, you really made my day Just 